when I'm making half models, I cannot make a model with, with the moldings and toroils without this small chuck. And you can still get them through Woodcraft Supply, even though they don't list them in the catalog. But that, those are all the part numbers. Maybe you can get them right from the factory, but they're, they're really excellent. And they, the only thing I've ever found to drill into small moldings and tow rails. These are the brass nails that I usually use. And I get them at a hobby shop in Hyannis behind the mall. They're number 69. That's the size of them. So with a combination of 69s and the little chuck you put, that you can put right into a small drill, it usually works out good. Okay. Now this is the last polishing. You finished your cove and your boot top? Everything's mm -hmm. all done. And that's the perfected, right? Or is it? 3M perfected. 3M perfected. That's what I use for the finish. Just a matter of rubbing it in a little bit. And you can go right over your painted cove and your painted boot top. Yeah. I use, as I said probably before, I use Viva towels. Yeah. Now if you're not interested in all this polishing, which is a real pain, when my ancestors, grandfather and great-grandfather and uncles made models, they weren't fussy about the finish at all. They just put a few coats of paint or varnish on, you know. That was it. So. It's up to each person. If you're not into it, just, you can do it just the way they did it. And, and also my relatives never put on the keel the center board or moldings or anything. They're just the actual hull. And then they paint the date, right? Yeah, so they used to paint the date on it. Do you have any of those upstairs that I can yeah, show? Yeah, one. I've already polished the rudder, so that's done. And that's it. Look at that shine. Now what are you going to do? We had a question regarding wax. What are you going to do for this one now that you're done polishing? you going to do one of the waxes on it? No, but... You're not going to for this one? Sometimes I spray some of this on. So just a furniture polish. Probably any of them would do the same thing. I don't always use it, but I might after I uh, mount it so I can get any fingerprints off. And sometimes you also use like a, a marine wax that's non-cleaner, yes. right? Wax yes. sometimes. Now here's an idea for sharpening. I have a lot of diamond stones I use for sharpening. But this is an inexpensive way of doing it. I am not the greatest sharpener in the world. But if you can get a, especially a flat piece of granite, maybe at a store, you know, they have samples of that. You just take, just wet the granite. What grit you have there? Uh, I think this is a, 2000. It's, it's probably too fine. You'd probably start with four or six and maybe go to a thousand. But this is what I just happen to have. And this is a spoke shave blade, so I put a pair of vice grips hooking on just to 
a piece of longer sandpaper would have worked better. You just get different grits of wet sandpaper, probably at any hardware store, paint store. You don't have to use granite, but I was lucky enough to get it. You can buy a piece of granite like this at Woodcraft Supply. They, uh, they sell pieces. For this purpose? Yep. Just take off any little burr. 2000 is probably too fine for. But it just gives you the idea. I'm doing it. What about one of your chisels? Would you do what, one of your chisels the same way? Yes. Chisel blade? But with coarser paper. Coarser paper. Personally, I like diamond stones because they sharpen fast. You can get all sorts of diamond stones, all different grits. sizes. I like the bigger ones, but these are the small ones. I think that's a thousand grit. The red ones, I use the red more than anything, and that's, I believe, a 600 grit. You just use water, don't use oil. And, uh, they work great, last a long time. All right. Is that all? Yep. Are you thinking about doing any more for this um, new model you have going? Not tonight. Not tonight. Okay, well maybe let us know if you want us to do more videos on the next model he has started, okay? I'll do a picture of the model. Maybe you can come upstairs and tell me about the model you have that was made by your grandfather. Yeah, I don't know who it was made by. All right, well, let's go. This is Horace Manley Crosby Sr., my grandfather. He built many, many boats many cap boats and all different other types and uh, it was quite a boat builder. This is a model that he made back way back in the 20s. Nineteen twenty nine. This is a power boat and this is how most of them were made. See there's no keel no, no trim on it, no rub rails. So, you know, if, that's, if this is how you want to make them, it's a lot less work doing it this way. And they didn't have any backup board, just a couple of eye hooks on the back of the model and screw them to a wall, get them level. It's all a matter of taste. They're both beautiful. All right. Okay. Bye.